that that can happen. Well, where should my cholesterol be? <coughs> well, the answer is it depends. And one of my, here's my, uh, who has gotten a copy of their cholesterol results without any in-person explanation of their labs, or perhaps still is not sure how much concern they should have? And that's kind of my pet peeve, whether it's a family member who's gotten their cholesterol, and they get, I think most docs send a letter, and they quote normal ranges. My pet peeve as a lipidologist is, well, it depends where, you, this is an individual thing. We have population recommendations of where you are, are you as an individual, and I tell my patients, I'll pretty much only call you if you're at extremely low risk. Don't panic if I say come back, because I got a thing, you may be in the middle, but not need medication, you need lifestyle, or work on some of those both. Or you may be at the extreme level, and I can't explain that. And a lot of what we talk about here, I talk in the clinic. So if you come back and you want to see me, and you want me to repeat everything, I guess you weren't listening. <laughs> <laughs> You're all listening, so you may come back All right. Um, again, we talked about how the offering regular testing, it's okay when we look at a general population, but an individual risk for missing people. Um, and regular cholesterol levels, LDLC, are a guesstimate of a true person's risk. Part of that is it's, um, we're still missing a lot of people by regular traditional uh, testing. Here. So I'm going to give an example of an actual patient of mine. She's a 38 year old woman who came in, her cholesterol was 183. Her HDL, or good cholesterol, um, is 37, and I'm assuming you guys probably have had at least a cholesterol done if you're coming to this, and part of that you've probably at least seen some of these numbers. Her LDL cholesterol is 112, triglycerides 178. She has normal blood pressure and she doesn't smoke. How much concern should she have? Well, we look at what we as doctors use, that many of often uh, use, is uh, these risk assessment scores, and often that's part of the um, calculations that are done even in some of the testing, or the uh, handouts you may get um, with feedback where your, where your cholesterol is. She actually has a less than 1% of <coughs> cardiovascular event in the next 10 years based on Framingham risk criteria and guidelines. Her LDL C control <coughs> would be less than 160, which she was well under. So you can say, hey, she's actually, don't worry, she's at low risk. Um, she would have been told that you're just fine. <coughs> What is her actual lifetime risk of cardiovascular event? It's actually, <coughs> if it's very high, in the range of about 70% if left untreated. Well, why is that? Well, when we look at her, we did more advanced testing, she has a very high LDL particle number that we had to order a separate test for, 2,585. It's about a factor of 10 difference when we equate that, so if she, that would be equivalent to an LDL of 258, which is equivalent to something called uh, familial hypercholesterolemia, where you have lack of a receptor and removing the cholesterol. She was a very high risk. This is a range um, over 1900 times. She had this with a completely normal LDL. Can I ask you a question? What caused you to do another test? Because that's what I do. Because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Because you I, normally do that with I, I do that pretty much with everyone. Um, for most patients, I do that with. Because we talked about the limits on the regular test. And part of the honest, too, is um, I found out, and I didn't put my story up here, but I had an LDL cholesterol of 113. Total cholesterol was 169, the HDL was 30, and I was 33 and 38 now. And I had this testing done before I got certified in pedology, and um, I thought, what's the use? We got all the stuff I, I had learned, I was up to date, I follow the guidelines, I, I'm on top of things, I, I'm doing what we're supposed to do, and it turned out mine was 2,000. And I didn't, I never looked at the number before, I, and I said to the guy who was doing the test, I said, that's, that's average, right? Not doc, but this is actually very high. And I am went in on and getting more advanced testing at elevated c rate protein, had an elevated life of protein A. Had some family history, I'm 33, that's a middle aged old person problem. And that really opened my eyes to that. So I feel in a sense when, and, and uh, since then I got very interested in this. And I already had plaque in my arteries, uh, had heart scan done, so already showing plaque at 33. So I would have been on that path down towards that. So I don't do it, I don't do it on absolutely everybody, but I could say a couple things in terms of my teeth medicines. She did have a little bit elevated. Uh, she had a lower HDL and higher triglyceride level. 
which more often there'll be a disconnect between your LDL and LDL particle number, but we don't know, we can guess. Um, she also had a very high C-reactive protein. It's a marker of inflammation. It's in the lining of the artery. Uh, we talked as a measure of that. It's also connected with increase abdominal fat. Less than one's more normal, 10 is very high. Um, she already, uh, based on that, likely already had plaquenary. She did have a strong family history of cardiovascular disease. She also was in the pre-diabetic range and had a very low HDL. Um, so, that's why she, and she also had what we call metabolic syndrome. Um, <coughs> I think we get to uh, another case. Here's another case. That, there are, I have many cases, men and women, but I knew there would be a lot of women here. It's a thing. 53 year old woman who came in, cholesterol is 208. Her LDL was only 89. Probably you'd be under 100. Hey, that's optimal, right? And actually, her HDL was 73. That's actually protective. That's supposed to be good. She might have. Total triglycerides were a little up, makes you think, 228. Her LDL particle was 2220. She had a high C-reactive protein. She also had blood pressure. Um, she actually was at very high risk. <coughs> With our regular testing, we may not, we not have been able to take that up. So we got a little bit of time to talk about metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome, syndrome, <coughs> syndrome we talk in medicine, is a group of characteristics that when present increase the risk of heart, or increase the risk of a certain disease or problems. Before we knew HIV caused AIDS, we knew there was a certain disease that would seem to be acquired and would weaken the immune system. We discovered that. Now we know there's a complex control of your energy in your body, both well, glucose and triglyceride, and all these different things in your body. Short of it is it increases risk of developing diabetes, increased risk of heart disease. Many people with this tend to pack the cholesterol in very small dense LDL particles. And Probably close to about 40-50% of people are predisposed to this, depending on their environment. And the things that we check in our clinic, part of a vital sign, and I sometimes have to remind my nurses, they're in for a strep throat, but we check abdominal circumference. You came in for a strep throat, I'm not going to check that necessarily, but part of your checkup, blood pressure, diabetes, abdominal circumference. Generally speaking, for men over 40 inches, women, <coughs> 35 inches, having blood pressure over 130 or over 80, 85, glucose over 100, fasting, uh, triglyceride over um, 150, and HDL less than 50 for women and less than 40 for men, okay? When you have that, and the more of those have, meet three of those to quote have to meet the criteria for metabolic syndrome, if you have all five, it makes me very concerned and would definitely want to do a advanced testing. Um, High blood pressure, just talking about that, that's, it, it, that's not just, oh, what's the big deal? When you have bad cholesterol, when you throw in bad blood pressure, that's just for simple explanation, and having, quote, bad cholesterol, there's ranges of bad cholesterol, so it doubles somebody's <coughs> risk of heart disease. And I say, by itself, high blood pressure doubles the risk. You say, well, combined, they should quadruple the risk, right? It actually is close to like 8, 9, 10, 12, depending on how far off. It's a very bad combination with that. All right, so summary, we can identify most people who have heart disease or are at risk for heart disease through traditional risk factors, or we can identify many of them, but often they are inadequate, adequate, more advanced testing is to help to identify those who are at risk. Um, heart disease shouldn't be just thought of as a disease of middle and old age because we know that started. First, the patient of mine who had a stroke at age 55 had that probably going on starting in even in childhood, and it's slowly built up over years. And um, if you're at risk, and this is the whole thing, if I have a patient who I, unfortunately, all the cards are laid out and they're flipping up, you're at really high risk. There's, then the question is, well, can we do anything about it? Well, I wouldn't have gotten so passionate and excited about this if it was sorely cancer, that you have stage four cancer and it's just palliative right now, there's nothing we can do. We can do, we can actually reverse plaque. We have very powerful treatments now that can actually reverse plaque. <coughs> Part of that is making good choices as far as lifestyle, diet and exercise, but often we have to use medication with that, depending, and, uh, and those are, when I talk about those, it's not it's the exclusion of one or the other. Hey, I can have a Big Mac because then, <coughs> I have my cholesterol medicine, so you want to do that. <coughs> <coughs> 